All right, yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to part, what is it, four now of the Boston Whaler Restoration Series, guys. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. It's your boy, one of a kind here. Um, so in this part of the video, guys, we are going to be doing more fiberglass repair. Um, so we have a little bit in the front to do. We have a little bit of the transom to do, and we have a little bit of touch up on that back little hole over there. Um, but for the most part, guys, we're gonna be doing a little bit of fiberglass repair, show you guys that, um, um, show you the steps I'm gonna take. And then after that, we get to the fun part, guys, and that is the gel coat. So um, after we do that, we're going to gel coat this entire thing. It's already been sanded. It's been prepped. It's been ready. You guys already saw that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and gel coat it. And um, this video, we should be done with the whole backside of the boat, really. I mean, last video, guys, we got a lot done. Um, so let's take you guys, and I'll show you guys the steps of the fiberglass repair. I think I have you know, two cracks back on the transom. Um, and then I have a piece up there in the front. I have a few pieces I got to fix up in the front. So we'll go ahead and show you guys that. So uh, let's get right to it. So on the front of the boat, it's a little hard to tell, but um, we have a little chip right here. We have to do a little fiberglass repair. Um, this right here, I might do fiberglass. I might just put resin on it. I don't know. Um, just because I don't want anything happening to it. Um, up here, we also have a small crack. It's filled with dust right now. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. Um, small little crack, so I, I might fiberglass it. I don't know. I haven't really made up my mind yet. Um, probably just going to put some resin on there. We'll see. And then over here, guys, there's a little crack over here, too. One more over here. But the biggest part up front was that it was this part up here. So I don't know if you guys can really tell, but, I mean, the I guess the fiberglass hole goes, like, right here, right? And then all of a sudden chips off. Let's see about you guys can see that chips off and it's just it's literally just the fiberglass right here for a good a good part so we obviously don't want that to be exposed to the water so um this is probably the biggest piece we have to do on the whole boat of uh, fiberglass repair so we have to build this up and it's gonna be a little tough because we don't really have a lot of working room um but and you know what's crazy guys is it's, it's not like i i damaged the boat or something is that literally it was like this the entire time but guess what happened? Which shouldn't surprise me, shouldn't surprise any of you guys, because you guys have seen this boat. Um, they literally filled it with like some sort of like like caulking or like sealant or whatever like that. But the sealant was like not even marine grade or whatever, because I literally just ripped it right up. So <laughs> we're gonna do this repair right. We're gonna fiberglass over that. So um, let's go ahead and show you guys that process of how we do that. Um, and uh, let's get working guys. I'm excited. All right guys So the first step before working with fiberglass got to make sure your area is clean like I said So let's go ahead and clean up our area right here um, Got a ton of dust after hand sanding it um, So use our acetone like I said guys super cheap and you want to make sure you do the job, right? so Look at that guys Disgusting. Alrighty guys, so here comes the fun part of the video, um, and one of the first beginning parts of the video, I guess, um, which was the fiberglass repair. So right here, as you guys can see, um, this was the part that was hurt by the, the silicon or whatever like that, and they just patched it up, band-aided it up, um, and so obviously, you know, removing all the silicon, you can't just have it exposed, fiberglass exposed like there, and it was, it was actually kind of nasty too, because it was like the fiberglass was like moldy like there was like a layer of mold or i don't even know what it was so right here guys in that clip you just saw me cut the fiberglass piece um and kind of fit it and everything fit nicely um as a beginner this was a little bit weird of an area to kind of glass you know on a curve because you know it's just kind of weird how you have to like glass it and make it fit in and it, it, especially working with epoxy that you know dries super quickly but i was able to do it and i did about four different layers of that and then i ended up adding two three more to the end so all in total like six or seven layers of that um and here guys you guys are seeing me cut i actually did go ahead and glass that uh little crack i was talking about just to be safe um it was one of the bigger cracks so i did decide to glass over it so and this clip guys uh, i'm gonna go ahead and lay the epoxy over the place and um laying the strip down and like i said it was a super weird area to go ahead and work with just because it was like you know it's tight and it was just it was on a curve as well so i'm kind of struggling here you guys as you guys can see to to lay that piece but um i ended up getting it um and like i said i did about six layers to really build it back up all right guys so today is the end of a uh, fiberglass repair day one uh made a lot of progress um as you guys can see i went ahead and uh i got the to the 
one chip on the, the right side of the boat um, fixed. It must have been just a dock bump or something like that. Like I said, that was just filled with just like silicon or I don't even know, man, but it was not a good repair. It was pretty much just like a band-aid, but you guys can see that right there. Small little bump, but you know, we, we went ahead and fiberglass both of those and fixed those up. Um, and it was weird what happened too, guys, was that my resin, um, again, which I don't know what, what it's doing. I, I, I mixed even less hardener in here this time. After 15 minutes, it started like literally smoking. I think I have it on film and it just hardened up that I, I wasn't able to use it. And I'm like, this resin isn't cheap. Like I paid almost like 150 bucks for the resin and the hardener and I have two jugs of each. So that can just show you, tell you guys, it's, it's not cheap. So I gotta figure out what's going on with that. But I mean, the repairs are looking good. So we'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Alrighty guys, so here on the back of the transom is going to be the cracks that I was talking about um, previously throughout the video and then those three little holes. Um, so in this clip guys, you guys are seeing me go ahead and doing some more tracing and cutting out the pieces. Um, I did this for all the patches and filled them up. I did about eight layers on about each hole just to build it back up. Um, the transom already had a bunch of bumps, it's not even and I just wanted to make sure the job was done right. So here guys. You're seeing um, the finished job. I, I wasn't able to get footage of the actual um, process because the resin was just giving me such a hard time. But here you guys see I did a lot of fiberglass work and you guys can really just see the extent of those layers being built up and, and out really. I mean, like I said in previous clips, guys, you want to make sure that the whole area is good. Um, so here's that. It turned out great. So uh, let's get back to the video. It's looking great. All right, guys. So it's the next day after you guys um got the little update for me about the fiberglass work of the transom so as you guys can see um it turned out really really well um i <laughs> still a beginner with the fiberglass guys it's my only like third fourth time using fiberglass so i mean i did put a little bit too much resin i i was constantly you know wiping it up but i it just i guess i just put way too much um and it dripped down a little bit so i mean that's nothing that's not going to come out with sanding i mean if you sand over this it's going to be perfect Alrighty, guys so it's been a few days um i haven't been able to gel coat due to weather um, if you guys don't know, you aren't really supposed to gel coat when rain and moisture is happening because then it'll bubble up and it just, it won't be good. Um, so today's looks like a good day outside. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. Um, so today, guys, we're going to go ahead and do two coats. Um, so I have to do the first coat, wait about three hours, do another coat, and then give it 24 hours, do a light sand with 300 grit sandpaper, and then do a final coat. Um, and that just kind of smooths it out and makes everything good. Um, so let me go ahead and show you guys what gel coat we're going to be using and uh, let's get to gel coating. I'm excited. All right guys, so for the gel coat I'm going to be using, um, it's going to be from Total Boat. Uh, I've just, I've seen a lot of people on YouTube use Total Boat products, whether it's with the foam, whether it's gel coat, whether it's paint, whether it's anything really. So um, I kind of, I just went away, I went ahead and used um, Total Boat. Um, I figured since everybody else is using it, I will too. Um, so we have white gel coat here and contains the wax. So. From what I believe, I don't think I'll have to do a layer of wax after since it already um, has it mixed in with the gel coat. Um, and it was a little bit more expensive to get it with the wax. Um, but the gallon right here, guys, was only, I think, $128 on Amazon. And you know, it shipped pretty fast. So I mean, it was it was nice and easy. I mean, gel coat's pretty expensive, so I thought this was pretty good. And from what I've seen too with Total Boat, um, gel coat, you can, uh, brush it on or spray it, which is also nice and it does come with this uh, the me keep it M E K P catalyst whatever So we got to mix that in and do all the good stuff. So let's go ahead and get everything mixed and then we will go ahead and uh, Get the gel coating All right guys, so here in this clip we're pouring the uh, Gel coat so you guys are gonna see me pour all this total boat gel coat in here and here's the M E K P um, Go ahead and mix it in um, pro tip make sure you mix um correct ratios based on the temperatures outside because i didn't do that and i didn't have enough working time so just a heads up guys go ahead and know your measurements and do it accurately based on the temperatures outside um so you don't mess up like i did and end up wasting a ton of gel coat pro tip
Alrighty guys, so here's uh, coat number one of gel coat on the boat. Um, the boat looks like a freaking brand new boat, guys. I'm, I'm very happy with how this is turning out. Um, as I said, guys, I did have a problem with my gel coat, but I mean, this looks fantastic for coat number one. Um, like it looks like it just came off the lot back in 1977. Um, so it's looking fantastic. So yeah, it's, I think we're, I think we're good to go for the second one. So alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching part four of the Boston Whaler restoration series. Um, it's been awesome. It's been super fun. Um, sorry, this episode took a little longer um, than usual to get out because it was a lot of work. I had a lot of things going on at home and just a bunch of hurdles I had to over, overcome, I guess, with um, the project, with whether it was um, that epoxy, whether it was the gel coat mishap the other day. Uh, so it's been a process, but the boat's looking fantastic, guys. So in part five, you guys are going to see me go ahead and uh, do the final uh, layer of gel coat, and I'll show you guys the wet sanding process in that final layer, and then it's back to putting the floor in this baby. So we'll be on the water soon, guys. I'm freaking excited. I mean... For a first timer, I think the boat looks fantastic. As usual, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, it means the world to me. All the new subscriptions, the views, the likes, the comments, everything, guys. So keep liking the videos, keep subscribing down below, and um, keep commenting, guys. I like interacting with the fans and, and stuff like that. And um, you guys are giving me helpful hints and, and everything else. So thank you guys so much, and uh, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. One of a kind, out.